Topic number one today is one I alluded to in the comments. We had a big discussion about where it is easiest to win at in college basketball program-wise. So this came from uh, the lovely Dr. Doctor, who's our resident Indiana fan, and then everybody else in the Discord was fighting him on this. Dr. Doctor insinuated that it is as easy to win at Indiana right now for a coach or anyone you hire as it would be at the the current blue bloods of Kansas, Kentucky, et cetera. Um, th this stemmed from like, is Indiana blue blood or not? But it turned into like, well, it's just as easy to win there. Everybody disagreed, including me. I'm like, let's come on. Like this, this place yeah. is turning coaches into bad coaches. It's not just, they keep hiring the wrong guy over and over again. Um, so it, but it is a fun question to think like if every program in the country was stack ranked, Say we plucked Bill Self away from Kansas and put Bill Self on every single program in the country. Where would be the easiest for him to win and work down the list? So let's come up with a top 10 on this, but I feel like you're going to give me some great insight here. Uh, so number one, I think, has to be Kansas. Kansas has been playing basketball since the 1800s and has one coach in its history with a losing record. Do you know who that man is? No, off the top of my head, I don't. James Naismith. <laughs> That's great. The man who the man who invented the sport is the only coach in Kansas basketball history with a losing career record at Kansas. That's incredible. It's it's it, I, I think the infrastructure is set up well. It's a basketball school. Fog Island is the best place, best home court in the country of all the resources that you need. Yes, like Kansas is not some basketball hotbed, but they have not had an issue recruiting. Kansas is the, the, I think, only number one answer you can possibly have. Okay. I think I agree. I'm obviously not going to fight this. The only one I would put in the same, like, could be one category, I think is Duke. Can we can we have the Duke conversation next? What separates Kansas we can. from Duke? So I have UNC 2 and Duke 3. Ooh, why UNC ahead of Duke? Uh, the UNC is a state school quite frankly it, it, it's public has more money has the the jordan brand associated with it i think the only time unc has ever really been down was after dean smith retired and matt doherty and then you had um oh what's his face i want to say bill guthrie but i don't know if that's correct um where the three years matt doherty was there and it was a true rebuild and you could argue he was getting the program back on track when he got fired and Roy Williams came in and won with his players. Don't need to have that debate. But the big difference between UNC and Duke is the fact that UNC has proven it can do it through multiple coaches, right? Hubert has taken them to the national championship game. Roy Williams won national championships. Dean Smith won national championships. Mm -hmm. Duke is a very, very good program that I, I think it's discounted for just being Coach K. And Duke had a long, successful history before Coach K and has been successful in the two years since then. But only one man there has won national championships. Like only one man has been to as you know, anywhere close to what you would consider a significant amount of final fours. Yeah. It's, it's been a, a one coach program, certainly in recent memory, not so, that Duke, not that Duke isn't one of them, but I think there is more proof of concept with multiple guys having success at Kansas and UNC than at Duke. My flip on this to you would be I what I'm interested in ranking right now, I think is where is it easiest to win at today? Not necessarily mm -hmm. historically, because I agree with the point on Duke. Like if we go back to the 60s, it wasn't easy to win at Duke, but it's yeah. incredibly easy to win at Duke now in a post Coach K world. I would say probably more than anybody, honestly. Like, don't you think you could put any coach on Duke right now with the brotherhood bullshit, and that's the easiest place to win? I do. I, I don't. And so th this is the part really? where the the multiple coaches having success comes into play, is because like right now, let's say John Shire stumbles out of the gates, right? And we we saw John Shire do this oh. each of his first two years. It's oh, he's not Coach K. We need to find somebody else because you are automatically measured up to the greatest coach in college basketball history, right? At UNC and at Kansas, you are not. Okay. 
Yeah, cause yeah, you're right. It's like it's a shorter yeah, leash. There's just added pressure. Like you're not, yeah, the, you're not Coach K. I didn't think of that at all. Okay. Yeah. So Kansas one, North Carolina two, Duke three. We feel good on that. I feel great on that, considering it was mine. Yes. Okay, let's nominate some teams next. In, in my head, I'm wondering when Kentucky's coming off the board. I think Kentucky is top five because you have everything that you need. I, I, I'll put Kentucky at four. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm having the debate in my head, and I'm curious to know your thoughts of Kentucky or Michigan State. Whoa. So I have a list right here in front of me. Let me add this out. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I only have 12 teams that I have currently in consideration. Maybe you'll blindside okay. me one and we'll change it. But uh, Michigan State is on the list, but I got to be honest, in my head, I wasn't sure if they would make the top 10. I had them right around the cut line at the bottom. I'm surprised for sure that you would have them ahead of schools like maybe a UConn, maybe a UCLA, maybe a Louisville, maybe an Arizona maybe even in Indiana. What What is it about Michigan State that you think propagates them up? Um, I still, I, you can make the argument that, you know, they're the premier program in the Big Ten. Indiana fans don't want to hear that. Purdue fans don't want to hear that. And again, there are arguments to be made for both of them. But you can make that argument. Michigan State has the passion, has the resources, has everything you need to be up there. And it kind of goes back into two. You have the history. You've had success through multiple coaches. I know Izzo has gotten to the point where particularly right now, you're going to be compared to Tom Izzo the same way you would get compared to coach K at Duke. Um, but I think resources wise, recruiting base wise and your, your reach, I think Michigan state is underrated in that aspect. Um, partially because I don't think Izzo has adapted to some of the more modern things that you need to. Yeah, I'm with you there. The The other side of this, to me, the, the most important part of all this would be resources. Like we can have the, what do your yeah. fans expect? How much job security do you have, et cetera, part. But to me, it's just like, if, if a good coach steps into all of these, where is he going to have the most resources? And I think Kentucky at four is probably a little low in that sense, but it's up there. Um, Michigan State, feels like a school that doesn't have resources right now because they're not using them. They do have yes. resources and it's hard to separate the job between Tom Izzo right now. Um, but I think the reality is whenever Tom Izzo steps aside, this school could be one of the top five in the country in NIL immediately. Like I, I know on good record that, alums are trying to pony up huge numbers for Tom Izzo. He just won't play the game. So yeah, I don't hate that. Do we want to go Kentucky four? I mean, Michigan state five. I, I would definitely go Kentucky four. I will slide Michigan state down. If you'll make an argument for some others that you, that you feel more confident. In. I feel very confident about those top four. So I think I, Michigan state has to be included. Let me have the Yukon combo. And then I might make an argument for a few others. Um, okay. What is it that makes UConn such a place that actually is winning? Because if this conversation is like, where is it easiest to win at? The results would tell us it's UConn. Three different coaches have stepped in in 20 yeah. years and won titles. But when you step back broadly, it's like they don't have the greatest facilities. I don't think they're spending as much money as anybody. Obviously, history matters and great coaches have done great there. But am I missing the secret sauce on what actually makes it easy at UConn? See, I don't think so. And UConn's the one I had a hard time thinking about because of the history that you mentioned. Like, they've won six national championships in 25 years. Like, that's absurd. Absolutely absurd. I do think we're talking about different eras, though, and context matters. Like, Jim Calhoun at UConn was incredible, and that was, um, I, I think, something you can write off of having repeatable success right now. I think Kevin Ollie's was a little fluky. If we're going to be honest, it was a down year in college basketball and Shabazz Napier just went off. And I think the last two have more to do with Dan Hurley than the program UConn itself. Okay. I think, I think UConn is in the mix for the top 10, definitely top 15, but if you're going to argue for them at five, I think that's, you have to really take into account how much of their recent success is Dan Hurley versus the program itself. Here's the UConn argument. 
I think mystique matters now. And if we are if we are doing the where do you go today, like say Dan yep. Hurley left for the Lakers and yep. we're plucking again, let's use Bill Self just as our name. If you plucked Bill Self and put him on UConn, the UConn brand now carries so much weight for this new generation again. Maybe, yep. and honestly, there probably wasn't a point even 10 years ago where UConn didn't carry weight, but any high school basketball player that is coming through now associates UConn with the best program in the sport. Um, and, and I think that has to matter once you get past the big four of Kentucky, mm-hmm. UNC, Duke, Kentucky. It's like, let, who's an elite recruit right now in high school? Um, let's just use like AJ DeBansa, for example. Yep. First year Michigan State coach calls AJ DeBansa. Obviously, he's after money, but he's not associating that program with winning the same way that kids 20 years ago did. UConn kids are. Mm-hmm. So that that would be my only argument. Um, like, I, I don't have much doubt about where UConn heads whenever Hurley leaves because of the mystique around it and shit, how much we talk to players at the Final Four, former UConn players who are just like, yeah, like, we, we're a family dog. We come back for this shit all the time. All we do is win. Like, I think yeah, that's real that's, thing. <laughs> I think that's fair. And I, part of my hesitation, I, I'm fine putting them up there. I think you've talked me into it. part of my hesitation is we didn't know how they would, we didn't expect them to fall off when Calhoun left. Yeah. And then they, and then they did pretty substantially. Yeah. And Hurley brought them back. Right. And I think it's a testament to Hurley. Um, so I, I I'm not going to say they can't fall off, but it's certainly going to be easy to step in there with the Yukon mystique. And Yukon is very tight knit. Like I, I remember reading an article about Kemba Walker when he was making all-star teams with the Hornets about how he still had like Yukon bed sheets. Yeah. And like his room was still like a Yukon shrine, basically like Yukon people and Yukon alums love Yukon and will do anything to support that. So I, I, I like that. I, I could buy them in top five. Let's go Yukon five. I'm fine with Mich- Michigan state six. Here's my list of six options. I think I already said them, but for the final four spots, Alabama, Indiana, Arizona, UCLA, Louisville, Villanova. I think they're all in the same bucket. I think they all have resources. I think Villanova is probably lowest on the resource end from, except Villanova has money, man. Maybe they're not. I would, I would cross Villanova off the list. And I have a soft spot for Villanova because my grandpa was a Villanova alum. And that kind of is what got me hooked on part of what got me hooked on basketball, particularly outside of just Duke UNC and um, NC state. Um, But you're going to be compared to Jay Wright you're going to inherit an absolutely terrible roster without the resources of a conference that has football. I, I think Villanova is still a good job. I would not put it top 10. Okay. So Villanova is off the list. If, if we're actually doing cross another off the list, as I read them out loud, starting to think maybe Alabama doesn't belong. Cause tr- historically like that's a football job. So right. like, would that fall more in the Ohio state, Michigan bucket right they have money and nate oats has done a great job but i don't know i would um i would cross bama off and i think i might put florida on florida or like auburn could be a play but those even those can be football schools well i mean and florida is but florida has more basketball history obviously with the back-to-back championships and i think we're far enough removed from billy donovan to where that's not like somebody hanging over the program i do think you need another school which is the sec paycheck in the Where are you putting Florida over from this group of four? Because we still need four. It'd be Indiana, Arizona, UCLA, or Louisville. Louisville. Why? Um, I think Kenny Payne is just disrupting our brain on Louisville. I think that's an incredibly easy spot to win at. To a certain point. Right. I, I think it's hard to get from the... Now, <laughs> with... We it's hard to go back because it's been about a decade worth of mess at Louisville just with NCAA stuff as well. Um, but there haven't been that many people recently who are like at a championship level or teams that were at a championship level at Louisville. They had a lot of really good teams in like second weekend, maybe final four teams, but not a ton you felt were real legitimate national championship contenders. I think it's easier to do that at a place like Florida where you are going to have um, some of the SEC money flowing in there that you're not going to have at Louisville. I think Louisville deserves in the top 10, but I'd make the case for Florida, maybe at nine and Louisville at 10. So we're, we're going to 11 here at this point. Somebody's missing the cut. 
between Florida and Louisville if those are our last two. UCLA. You want UCLA out? I want UCLA out. Why? Because. <laughs> like, I, you're, you're playing now. You have Big Ten money, but you are playing outside of your footprint. Um, you're competing in your own city with recruits with, UC, with USC. And I know UC, UCLA should have the cachet recruiting-wise of a, 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 a program that has won as many national championships as they have. Um, but sometimes they they don't seem to all the time. Like it still resonates more with people who are in Southern California and that area of the country, but it doesn't resonate nationally as much currently. Their last Final Four berth is when they were an 11 seed. Like they have not run the, they didn't run the Pac-12 at the end the way you would expect that program to. They have not had really consistent success at any point in the last like two decades. Again, top 15, not top 10. Okay. I think the footprint is the reason I'm comfortable moving them down. Like I, I have questions about how that's going to affect recruiting for kids that don't want to be based in California, but playing games in Lincoln, Nebraska. So exactly. Um, all right. So that leaves us. We had Kansas, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky, Yukon, Michigan state. The four remaining to rank are Indiana, Arizona, Louisville, Florida. Give me the order you want those four in. Um, I want Arizona at seven. Um, I like that. Are we positive I'm, Indiana deserves to be on this list? By the way, I was I, I was just talking about. I think it I, Indiana. You have the resources, but there is uh, some infrastructure there that makes me think they're probably more ten than eight. I agree. And I'm uh, there. Someone in the Discord said this, but like, what makes Indiana easier to win at than Illinois right now? I mean, money this off season, but that wasn't true last off season. I think that's a fair debate. I think that's a fair debate. Let's keep them on because I think we need a tenth. It's them or UCLA to me. Or and I would rather Indiana than UCLA. Okay. So how about how about Louisville eight, Florida nine? Perfect. I just Indiana didn't want Florida. 10. I wanted I didn't want Florida to be ten. Florida um, nine, so Indiana yeah, ten. Um well, only one we haven't mentioned. This is a credit to the coach that we're saying this. How far off is Gonzaga from this list? High. Today? Today. Like Mark Mark Few steps down, Bill Self goes to Gonzaga. That's a hard place to win at. Yes, I don't think I agree. To the level that Gonzaga fans expect you to win at, you're just, going to be just beat Pepperdine. How difficult is this? Like, if they get to the Big I, Twelve, I, it's a see, different this, conversation. This, I think this goes into the like, yeah, Gonzaga is still going to run the WCC. Are they going to be as nationally relevant, beating the top teams everywhere else in the country as they have been? I think that's the part that Mark Few has mastered that I, I think it's hard to do. Sure. Look, it's a credit to Mark Few that we even mentioned them in this exercise, but um, right. I, I think I would have them in the next 10 for sure, if not the top 10, which is... Impressive. I would say top 20. I would say top 25. I would say top 25. Okay. All right. All right, that was a fun exercise. Thank you, Ralph, for leading us. It's Kansas, North Carolina, Duke, Kentucky, Yukon, Michigan State, Arizona, Louisville, Florida, Indiana. In order, those are the 10 easiest schools to win at in the country. For the love of God, can somebody please win at Indiana then? 